Oh. And I'm going to go over here. Like who is it's still me? setting up the meeting. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Good of the Whole Connection Field. And this is the Trust Frequency Embodied. Assumption number 10. We've done them all. This will be the final one with a conclusion next week, to kind of wrapping it all together. And then we're going to move into the Trust Frequency Embodied for Relationships. So because we have a dance of souls online course that we're going to take you through. So hang tight with us and keep on coming. And we have Wowza Alyssa Lodge, who's going to be bringing us an embodiment practice tonight. And Andrew Cameron Bailey himself, who's going to be doing a meditation. And Andrew and I are going to be bringing some information for our mind. So our mind, heart, and body come together so we can walk this thing in our lives in total trust of a conscious, loving universe. So, Andrew, do you right. want to do your meditation thing? I will. You going to put the timer on? Sure. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right, friends. So welcome to our little Zoom group here, and welcome to the big group out on Facebook Live. Hello again. This is Monday. It is full, a full moon in Aquarius. We're out in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, and there should be a glorious full moon tonight, as long as the clouds um, play ball with us. So <clears throat> we have, we're at the 10th assumption of the 10 assumptions. So what we've been doing step by step, week by week for the last 11 weeks is to build a construct, to build an alternative reality. And you might say an alternative to what? An alternative to the everyday reality that we were trained, that we were raised in, that we have collectively experienced because that's the consensus reality of the world. And yet it does not have to be that. We have learned that we create reality with the power of our consciousness. And we've learned that our assumptions are foundationally important to the nature of the life we experience. So what I'd like to do is take us on a five or six minute experience, perhaps a shamanic journey into the trust frequency, because the 10th assumption is this. The trust frequency is real, all right? Which contradicts pretty much all of the current assumptions in the current reality, the trust frequency, what's that? Well, now we know what it is. We know how it breaks down into its different components. And we're learning how to exist, to be, to vibrate in the trust frequency, which is a vibratory state that acknowledges, knows, and lives in the conscious loving universe. We know now that we are love. We know that the entire universe is love. So let's sit with our spines erect. Let's descend gently into the silence and the peace and the beauty of being in our bodies on this beautiful day in early August in the year 2020. And let us remember, because this is about remembering what it means to be in the trust frequency, because this is a state that is available to anyone, anywhere, anytime. So let us practice that. So close your eyes and let your breathing calm down. Let go of everything that's been on your mind today and this week and this year. 
just let it go. It'll be here when we come back. But we will come back in a higher state of consciousness. And therefore, we'll experience it differently when we come back. So take a deep, gentle, cleansing inhalation. And let it go. And let's do that two more times. Inhale. And one more beautiful centering breath. Inhale. And let us just sit together in this resonant field of oneness in the trust frequency in the vibration of unconditional universal love. And when you are ready, come gently back into your body, into this place of peace and safety and comfort that is our physical body. And when you are ready, open your eyes and welcome each other here in the trust frequency. Thank you. Mm. Beautiful. So yeah, here we are. And we've given tools over the past nine weeks for us to catch a glimpse of a place where we can live in perfect balance with universal law, with our original instructions, as the native people would say. And we've caught a glimpse of that through this construct that we've presented on the nature of the universe, that there's only love. 
And the nature of that love is what we don't understand, that it's unconditional. It gives us everything we ask for. It sounds wonderful, but do we understand our requests to that conscious loving universe? We don't. We don't understand what creates our reality collectively and individually. And once we do, once we really grok it, really get it thoroughly in every cell of our body, which is what Wows is working with us on, and Andrew with the meditation to take us out of our minds into a bigger space, and Wows it to bring it through and really integrate it into our bodies, that there is only love, that we are given what we ask for and that we gave an overarching act of free will to come here on this planet with a gift and a purpose on our soul's journey to wholeness, which is self-love and self-acceptance. So what we're bringing to you is the fact that the universe is responding to that overarching act of free will. Yes, universe, I'm coming to earth to learn to love parts of myself I don't love yet. The part of myself that thinks I'm inadequate, that I'm too fat or too skinny or not smart or whatever it is that we've taken on in our childhood for us to learn and grow and come to love. And that's the subject of our course, the Dance of Souls, that we'll be taking you through in subsequent uh, weeks with this trust frequency embodied. But what we need to grok is that we came with an amazing gift, which is us, all of us, not just the parts we think people want to see, but the whole shoot and match, our divine, autonomous, amazing self with a gift to bring to this party that all of creation is awaiting, that gift, which is us. So what we want to just bring tonight is an understanding that this isn't easy, that we may catch glimpses and glimmers of it, with a near-death experience or just an epiphany, walking in the woods or in the shower or who knows where we might have this epiphany. OMG, this is a magnificent, loving universe. But then the reality sets in and we forget. And then we glimpse it again and we walk it again, but then something throws us out of balance and we, will, we dive down into the depths, into our self-doubt, self-hatred, fear, all those things that have been the, one, the reason we came for our own healing of self-doubt, but also all that fear that has been built into our systems the scarcity is not enough, so I've got to grab it. So I have power and control over others so my kids can survive, so I can survive. All those systems of competition that we have built in a lower frequency of separation of the other. And we better fight with the other because we need to have power and control over the other so they don't have power and control over us, et cetera. And we learn that in school survival of the fittest, you go out there and compete and you win. Doesn't matter what happens to the guy next to you. you, you get it and you climb to the top because your survival matters for your children and for yourself. But that's low frequency stuff. And fortunately, the earth's moving into a higher frequency. So we don't have to fight city hall. It's actually now, it's harder to stay in that behavior and in those beliefs, 
than it is to transition into our hearts and into walking in alignment with our hearts and our true nature and the true nature of the universe, which is abundant, which is loving, which is there for us and has our back if we let it know that we trust that it does. And guess what? It's physics. It's not even airy fairy stuff. It's actually physics. It's vibration. It's frequency. So if those of us who have any trouble with thinking, oh, this is all new age, airy fairy stuff, and I've got to play ball with the real world and forget that. Just consider the physics of it, the vibratory level, that the different frequencies, the different vibrations have different laws. You know people for whom life is easy and abundant. Well, it can be your reality too, because it is an abundant, loving universe. We've had so many way showers. Jesus with his loaves and fishes and his healing capacities. Well, guess what? The native people of this world, they can do those healing things. They aren't miracles. It's the true nature of the universe. Jesus was a way shower. He was showing us what can be done. And the native people, the indigenous peoples of the world have been carrying this for us in the essence of who they are and what they know. So now is the time when we're ready to move into this knowing. And we fortunately, we have way showers. So any, you want to add anything, Andrew, to that? I think I could. Yeah. So tonight's presentation here is the 10th assumption, which is precisely the 10th assumption in our book, The Trust Frequency, 10 Assumptions for a New Paradigm. And the 10th assumption states that the trust frequency is real. And I just want to state categorically that there's no reason to doubt that. We've presented a survey from lots of different perspectives from religious and spiritual perspectives, from the, in, the perspective of indigenous cosmology, and from the perspective of quantum science. And every one of those elements supports what we are presenting here and adds up, it all adds up to a, an alternative construct for living our lives in a completely different way from the way we grew up being told this is how it is, get used to it. Not so, not correct. And we are offering a completely alternative reality. And speaking personally, I'm the one who had the privilege of actually writing this book and assembling these words in collaboration with Connie here. And there's something very interesting that happens when you write the book. It means you've actually got to walk the talk. And that's not a hard thing, that's not a chore. It is just a fact of reality is once you start speaking this material, once you start manifesting from these, this place that we call the trust frequency, a change occurs, a shift occurs, a profound personal transformation occurs. And life, speaking for myself personally, my life, changed completely. And I'm not necessarily talking about outward circumstances, but the fact is that once our attitude and all of those different attributes of our consciousness are coming from this high, beautiful place that we call the trust frequency, the outcomes are completely different. You might have the same circumstance, but you experience it in a completely different, more beautiful, more peaceful, more loving, more accepting way. It's quite an extraordinary transformation, my friends. And those aspects of our consciousness that determine our frequency, I'll say them in a sentence. I say I do this pretty regularly because it's such an important sentence. 
And that sentence is, with expanded awareness and accurate assumptions, we choose our attitude, consciously direct our attention, align with our highest inner promptings, take committed action, and allow the loving universe to manifest beyond our wildest dreams. Because we can't even fathom what's in that frequency because we've been so inculcated into this frequency. And there's no shame, no blame because we've been responding to that lower frequency energy. And we've done a heck of a job to move through it and transmute fear, separation, scarcity, because the earth has been moving into this higher frequency. So we've gotten glimmers and senses and, and now it's a big shift with this pandemic, with the whole, it's very obvious that there's a huge shift happening on this planet. And fortunately that the, the energies that we are surrounded with are higher frequency. So it's easier. And there's a, there's a belief and an understanding that the ninth wave, Carl Callaman, who is a physicist is explained with the Mayan calendar that these nine waves of energy have been coming available to humanity. And now the ninth wave is there. So we can relax into it and into our hearts and into trust and know that there's something magnificent awaiting us. And it has to do with humanity's heart, our true nature, the true nature of the universe. It's not some construct that we have to make and fight this universe, this nasty universe and create something. No, it's we have to align with it and know and trust. So the other part of this assumption is the trust frequency is available to anyone, anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter when someone has been on the planet, where they've been on the planet, when, what, anything. It's just free will choice. And that comes from understanding, from knowing, from allowing our minds to release that grip and open and relax and walk in total trust. So how are we doing? I think we're doing rather well. Yes, how are we doing for time? I think we've got a little more time if we want to give it a little more time or do we want to let Wowza step in and do her thing and then we can have a discussion at the end. So my friends, we're getting ready for the extraordinary experience that our beloved friend Wowza brings to this presentation every Monday. Amazing. And what a challenge to embody, to bring down these marvelous, but maybe somewhat ethereal ideas and to bring them into our bodies and to get us moving and dancing and flowing in ways that perhaps we're not doing yet. And Wowza is the undisputed master, mistress of such things. So Wowza, are you ready, darling? So what do we do? Mm -hmm. We gotta spotlight you, my dear. We will. There we are. There we go. All right. There's Wowza. Oh, thank you. It is always just such a beautiful thrill to bring forth and embody the most glorious information I can possibly imagine. And those six principles, Connie and Andrew, I thought that would be a good um, uh, format to with this last assumption. 
and seven, uh, seven of them. Seven, the seven A's of consciousness. Seven A's, exactly, uh, exactly. And with awareness as the first, this idea of, and if you'd like to do it with me, almost as if you're pulling off a tight shirt and you're wiggling it through and you're now taking the lid off and pulling it off. And in that process, to step into the center of your very being and proclaim from the deepest heart of your knowing, we are a universal loving being <laughs> living in a conscious, loving universe. Now, with all the thousands of people I played with, oftentimes in the beginning, you know, I'm a conscious, loving being, living in a conscious, loving being, you know, uh, we, we, we have a tendency in most of our training to kind of what I call a straight-lined uh, monotone. And to take a little time with this. The vowels of words are the, the soul portal to our feeling nature, the very heart of our feeling nature. So again, I am, you are, we are conscious, universal, lo loving beings. <laughs> Can we say that all together? We are universal, universal. Loving, loving beings <laughs> living in a conscious, living in, in a conscious, conscious, loving <laughs> and to feel it all the way through in all the trillions of cells of your body. So the next, again, moving from, to me, the most important piece of information, the assumption that we are separate, limited human beings. Oh. And now making that shape-shifting perspective that is true to the nth degree that we are whole, that we are in a shared unity. And we say shared unity of oneness. Let's hear it. Good. We are a shared, shared unity of oneness. <laughs> I like it. And the next one, the attitude. And that's our stance. And again, as we play that, notice always, do I contract and, and conform more inward or where there's tightness and stress? We know we're in our separative body language. And this idea of lovingness as an attitude of such prime importance. And it's like, oh, hello, body. I shine and share the deepest, deepest love to you. And so it's so, you know, at first, oh my goodness, you know, to touch myself with love. Yes. Your body listens and feels everything you think and say. And to just, oh, shoulders, oh, beautiful heart. Just come with your hands. And are you willing to stroke your body all the way through? Belly, you know, down those legs. Oh, and see already you can just feel the bubbling joy that just comes out of your body. Your body is an inner universe. Woo! <laughs> and it just loves to be loved. 
And the more we can absolutely demonstrate this love, it just goes, oh, just like a little child. And it just gets so happy and so excited to be alive in this beautiful world. And then what is the next one? Ah, oh, to pay attention. So we have different centers. They all have different energetic modalities. The deep belly primal center. Whoa, and let's hear our voice a little bit. Wholeness, mm -hmm. the wholeness of the earth energy, earth energy. Can we, yeah, the wholeness of the earth mm -hmm. energy. <laughs> yes. And then coming up again into this heart, it's almost like, you know, just throwing it out into the world. Come on, heart, and connecting the heart to the one heart in which we all share. And then, ah, oh, see the mind, this one mind now connecting, see to the whole mindfulness of our very universe. Hello, mind, give me, share with me that intelligence of wholeness now ah oh, and then like the fountain of youth just running your hands through the body the fourth is that spirit of life itself spirit of life spirit of life oh fountain me fountain me with the youthfulness of being the eternal spirit is forever youthful Ah, uh, and then <laughs> the uh, alignment. It's really good to befriend the, uh, the harmony with gravity. When you're out of gravity, gravity is a wonderful yardstick to see, oh, uh, I am sinking down in the dumps and it's going to pull you down in the dumps to let you know that or you're hyperextending, you know, pushing and stressing, and you can feel that and go, whoops, tired, fatigued. And then there's a place you can put one foot in front of the other. Where am I the lightest? The most uplifted in gravity. Ooh, ah, ah, where, ah, there it is. See, we're belly, heart, Mind, spirit are all aligned. And then this ability again to take action. A new body language in standing with a friend, going out into the world, whoever. We've had a tendency to stand in certain ways. And oftentimes the heart is back of the midline. You wouldn't believe how much this is true. And to just, it might be an, an inch where the heart, hi, you know, inside, I see you as a conscious loving being while you're talking, you know, to a friend, going into a store, a stranger. And as you're saying, hi, your heart is connecting with their heart. And your mind and your spirit sees through whatever mask, whatever persona they're wearing, you see through to the heart of the matter. And then, is it there a last one? which is that allowing, oh my gosh. And that is a practice of a creative Tai Chi. See, the more fluidity now, we are more fluid with the world, with this universe, that we're just sending the very essence of our being. And can you just for a moment see, it's just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> You know, the love of life is here 
now. Can we just say that? The love of life. The love of life, the love yeah. of life is here now. Here now. Here now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm. And the, see that, and I'd like to leave you, to me, the prime tool is the hum of love everything is vibrating in the entire universe and believe it or not it's true every vibration in all of the universe is humming that would behoove us everything you're doing Every moment of your day, mm, mm, cleaning, you know, cooking, mm, mm, walking down the street, and notice as that hum of love pours through you out into the universe, it's the hookup. And it is indeed always with you for the ride. <laughs> it just makes, it keeps me happy <laughs> and I hope it can do the same for you beautiful wowza thank you wowza yeah so much fun being with you like this every week <laughs> and guess what we have we have Rita Rita Heather Marsh Rita. yeah and Rita we would love to hear from you a little bit about how one applies the trust frequency, how you see it being applied for human flourishing. Oh, oh wow, thank wow. you. <laughs> yes, thank you. You're really right there and present yeah. with your best friend behind you. I, w I was still buzzing along with Wowza. This is, yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the important thing is to take your magnificently formed sentence, Connie, and say it every day. Mm -hmm. And also, if one's just getting into the trust frequency process, to take an assumption, to take one of the assumptions, and once a week, just delve into it, contemplate it, watch what's happening around you, see what shows up as you take on the energy of the conscious loving universe. Mm -hmm. So um, this series has been amazing and I'm so glad that it's archived and will be available to people, I trust, yes? Yes, absolutely, uh -huh. it's on YouTube, it's a playlist uh -huh. on YouTube. So, um, and uh, I understand there's an ebook coming out soon. Mm. Yes. And there's the final next week, we'll do the conclusion to the series. So, we will wrap it up and we'll do a brief review of every place we visited, each of the 10 assumptions, and how they together create this new reality that we're now going to walk out with. And then, Connie's idea you presented that to me today, I think, that we're going to continue. And we'll continue, I think you all know that we, and WOWS is part of that as well, we have an online course on social chrysalis called the Dance of Souls, which is specifically about relationships. It's specifically about bringing this information into our interpersonal relationships. These often difficult growth experiences, these challenges we have with our fellow human beings and how do how and what's the purpose of that why do we why aren't we just happy in our little cells by um, by ourselves ah, we are attracted to others apparently for a purpose a higher purpose that triggers my growth by being with a fellow human being and as we all know relationships can be challenging and to accept those challenges from the place of the trust frequency, to trust that these feelings that sometimes we have of frustration or whatever it may be in our relationships are here for our growth, for our evolution. And it's a big flip to go from victim 
perpetrator to beneficiary benefactor. So we're going to walk you through that in our course on socialchrysalis.com, the dance hyphen hyphen, the dance of souls all hyphenated is how one accesses the course. But we will take people through that and with Wowza do some embodiment of this because it's, it's, that's a big deal. Applying the trust frequency to our relationships and not just love relationships, but relationships with our bosses, with our kids, with our parents, with the person in the grocery line. It's all there to show us our light and our shadow. So, so the presentation will be through this platform, but hooking into the social chrysalis for that program. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we will uh, simply continue this format on Good of the Whole every Monday at 5 p.m. Colorado time, which I believe is 4 p.m. California time and wherever you are on the planet. But it, as its focus will change as of not next week will be sort of the segue. We'll be moving out of this one, which has been the trust frequency, and into a, a, the trust frequency applied to relations, real-world situations we all are in. There's nobody on this planet who's not in a relationship, and there are, I don't believe there are any relationships that don't have their challenges. Right, and there's because a reason for that. We came with a job to do. There's a reason. The for loving that. universe shows up. So you mentioned the ebook, Rita, yes. and it's all very exciting because Andrew's been working hard. We've both been working. He's been working hard on formatting an ebook from the trust frequency. These ten assumptions distilled down into seven hundred and fifty words each, with some fun graphics, and we're going to make that available very soon. It's actually called the Conscious Loving Universe. And we wanted to capture that title because nobody else has actually used it yet. There's lots of books about the universe, but none about the conscious loving universe. So it's a little ebook that will have that effect. Yeah, we wanted to capture that concept because we came out with that in 2012. We've been calling it the conscious loving universe forever. And we did and... the very first project, written, write, written project we did was a book as yet unpublished. And its title is the conscious loving right. universe. So this is now a distilled, what's the term, the essential trust frequency and with a new title, but it, you'll, it'll be very familiar. And then once we've got that launched over the next month or two, it then morphs once again into a workbook. We'll do a, a, a workbook thing that people can take and do some practices and stuff. That so. wasn't what I was going to say. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say it morphs into another online course, a 12 module online course specifically. Now we did the first one at six modules, the dance of souls. And now we're going to expand that into the full blown online course called the trust frequency. And this will be contributing to that. So it's all this, all of this work and both of you have known forever that we've been working on this, and now that all these different manifestations are emerging. Yeah, and it's so great to have Wowza a part of it. Mm -hmm. And and Rita has been such a catalyst. I don't know if you two have ever met, but um, I would love you it if you ever met. just oh, here. <laughs> yeah. Rita's in Carbondale, Colorado, and she's really been a catalyst for our whole unfolding for over a decade. Right, and and Wowza's been a friend. So. Wowza, what's unfolding for you? Well, I'm almost finished with my book. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've been for quite a while, but mm. you know, there's like layers. So I'm just in the, uh, hopefully the almost final editing. So that what's book, book what's, what's the title of it? Sacred funny. Actor. The Sacred uh, Actor. That is Star Player of the Infinite Self or the Universal Loving Being. <laughs> <laughs> it um, yeah, it's it's still a workable second secondary title, but it's all about embodying a, the trust frequency and applying it to our daily life experiences, which is so great for people to have tools now. 
walking into this as this breakdown and breakthrough it's like okay we've broken down and broken through and now what do we do so giving tools for that and i'm sure rita you have tools for that with your um human flourishing programs that you have in carbondale so. yes um going to be doing some videos on the application of the integral health model to these times and also putting some things up on our website that have needed for a while to get fleshed out but now's the time to do it what is the integral health model briefly briefly yeah, right this is a synopsis yeah, a synopsis. Dr. Elliot Dasher, a colleague and friend of mine, internal medicine physician, wrote the book, Integral Health, The Path to Human Flourishing. And he took Kim Wilber's very complex uh, human development model and applied it to health to help. And his instigation was to get medicine to change its mind about how it was going to show up in the world. Hasn't happened. So we're applying it to health and looking at biological health, psycho-spiritual health, interpersonal well-being, and worldly. What's our work in the world? How are we involved in social activism? And it's a wheel, mind, body, spirit wheel. And we look at areas of growth in each of those quadrants and see how balanced the wheel is. And where it's out of balance, where work needs to be done. And this all feeds into the, the unified physics of Nassim Haramine and Jude Curvin and Marshall Leffert um, that is showing us that, it, that it's all interconnected. It all has to do with resonance, with harmonics, with, with the wholeness of being one system, that all of creation is one system. Right? I, uh, is it? Is that? Um, but you've been studying that as well, right? The unified physics of it all. Yes, and uh, so thrilled. You know, a, a film just came out recently about David Bohm's life. Yes. And and uh, magnificent film, and that really took me back to the roots of this work that I took off in in my body spirit understanding, and that. We all are one and come from the manifest of the universe. And uh, our life has taken us a away from that knowing of source. And now it's time to come back into full relationship so we can be the best we can be. On the evolutionary upward spiral. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But this has all had a purpose. This whole process has had a purpose and we've done a great job as 3D beings that we've done this process and pretty fast, you know, because we've had all these different races and different languages and different religions and all that stuff that has really been a whole um, stew pot to get us to, through this process. So it's, it's just so exciting. And these integral health models and Wowza's work and our work and on so much other work to, to give people an understanding <clears throat> to help us all choose to move into that knowing as the veil thins and we're just gonna get it in my understanding, we're gonna get it very soon. And we're gonna lay down the weapons of war. We're going to just move into that place of perfect dance of harmony and we can't even imagine what it's going to look like so that's right so i hope to be able to join you next week i'm um, going to head out here soon to go to the full moon ceremony that we hold here oh, good yeah once a month at nooch park in our community right. here at the base of mount sopris so hope to see you all next week. I wish we were there. <laughs> Maybe next month, next full moon. But we're we'll here. Out. Clouds are clearing and the sun is shining. So it's looking good for a moon tonight. So, so okay. take, take care. Okay. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Rita. Thank so you. So glad we could include you in the, in the conversation. Thanks for showing up. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Bye, yeah. Rita. Bye, Rita. Bye-bye.
So, wowza, I guess we'll call it a night. Can I ask a question? Are yes. we off? off no. no, we're on no, for we're another. No, we're still on. Shall we? Okay. We've actually got I, another I have a technical minutes. question to ask you. Okay. okay. Well, we can jump off. Let's just end the Facebook Live. A technical question to do with the trust frequency or to okay. do with computers and Zooming and stuff? Well, just to get a bigger picture of my body. Ah. Okay. So we'll um, we'll jump yeah. off. So this is and this end. end? Yeah, you can end it if you want to. And meeting. No, that's meeting. So here's live Facebook. Let's stop live.